Hey everyone, it's Chaz. I'm back with another Excel video, and today we're going to be looking at some of the exercises on this website I found, excelpracticeonline.com. I'll put a link in the description to help you find this website if you want to do the exercises as well, but for today I'm just going to go through some of the basic ones. I'm going to do the intro and the three sum function exercises. So let's get started. I'm going to click right here, and this should be really easy for anyone who has any sort of minimal Excel experience. But if you don't, then let's take a look real quick. So it's giving us the basics right here on top. We're going to use an equal sign whenever we want to show Excel that we're using a formula. And then the rest are basic math operations. The plus is the plus sign that you've seen since elementary school, minus as well. For division, we use this forward slash on your keyboard. For multiply, we use the asterisk. And for this percentage, if you place a percent sign after a value, I'll show you real quick. So I made a very quick example in Excel. I've just got two cells with two numbers in them. So if I were to make a formula that says, say, equals, and then I click this value, but I put a percent sign after it, it just divides it by 100. So when would you ever need to do this? Let's say I wanted to get 54 out of 80 as a percentage. So I guess the way I would do that, I would go equals 54 divided by 80. Now when I do this, it's going to give me the value as a decimal between 0 and 1. But if I were to change this formula and just put a percent sign just like that, it'll actually tell us 67.5, and it really is 67.5%. I don't know a lot of people who use this function, but it's there, so we might as well talk about it. So really quick, let's get through the... Why is this misspelled? Anyway, let's get through the arithmetic 2 plus 3. So let's go equals this cell plus this cell, and we're done. Keep going. Equals this cell minus sign this one. Done. Keep on going. Equals this time we're multiplying 5. Use the asterisk. That one, and good to go. Last one 10 divided by. Two. All right, moving on to percentages. I happen to know that this cell is already formatted as a percent, so I don't need to use that percent symbol. I'm just going to go equals 10 out of 100, 10%. And this time, since I know these are all going to be the same function, I'm just going to click on this little black box at the bottom of the cell, bottom right, and I'm just going to drag this formula down. There we go. And in case you don't know what I just did when I dragged those cells down, let me just show you real quick. I started a little Excel table right here where I'm going to calculate percentages based on a score and the maximum score. So first of all, I might as well show you another skill. I got to populate some scores here. So the maximum score for my exercise, I just want to keep it at 80 for this entire table. So actually what I could do is just take my mouse, go to the bottom right corner of this cell so the cursor changes, and I'm just going to drag it down. I get 80s all the way through. Now I want this score to be different. I want to show a different score just to show different examples of percents. So this time, if I drag down, it's just going to be a bunch of 54s again. That's kind of a problem. We want different scores. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type 55 in this cell. And now, if I select both of these cells and then drag this down, Excel is going to recognize the pattern that I've established, 54, 55. Excel is going to know that I want 56 to be the next one, and 57 and 58 and so on. So if I drag this down, you can see Excel is even giving me a preview of what number is going to be there. And I guess I should, yeah, I'll keep going, 83, that's fine. Now let me undo this real quick, Control Z. Now if I wanted this to count by a different value, I could do that too. Say I put 57 instead. Now Excel will recognize that I'm trying to count by threes. And so when I select both rows, change my cursor by putting the mouse in that little box in the bottom and drag down, you see Excel is now counting by threes. I can even go backwards. If I put a 53 there instead, select both cells and drag, it'll count down. But for the purposes of this exercise, I just want to show you the scores going up by one, and it's always going to be out of a maximum score of 80. So just like I did in the 
Excel website exercise, I'm going to calculate a percent by doing equals 54 divided by 80. And this time the cell is not formatted as a percent, but I'm just going to leave it that way for now. So let me show you what I was doing before. When I take this cell, put my mouse here in the bottom corner. When I drag down, what it's going to do is it's going to calculate this same formula, but for each corresponding row. Let me show you what that looks like. I dragged it all the way down to the bottom and it's calculating a different percentage in each row. So in this row, it's calculating 55 out of 80. In this row, it's calculating 56 out of 80, and so on. And the last thing that I'm going to do is to format this as a percent. I could have put the percent sign, like I showed you earlier, and then done these formulas, drag them down. And it would work. However, undo and undo. What I'm going to do instead is select this entire column, and I'm going to go over here to the number formatting area, and I'm just going to click percent. That'll change everything to a percentage automatically. And if I want more decimal places, I can just go right next to it, right over here, and I can add another, oh, wrong way, add another decimal point to my answer. Now, one more thing I do want to mention, just a productivity thing when i'm working with basic equations like this plus minus multiply divided i prefer to use the number pad on my desktop keyboard and i use the number pad because all of the keys that you need are easy to find you don't have to press shift to access them as long as your number lock is on you'll be able to type numbers on that keypad you'll also have access to plus minus multiply and divide without having to press shift to get multiply or try to figure out where the division key is on your keyboard. Everything's just a lot easier productivity wise if you use the number pad. All right, so the last two questions in this exercise are about calculating a percent change. The percent change, you just kind of have to memorize the formula. A year over year change like this, it's just gonna be the new value minus the old value divided by the old value. So in my head, I just think new minus old divided by old. So I'm going to do new minus old divided by old, but I know that my order of operations is going to mess this up if I don't add some parentheses in here. So what I mean by that is if I just go new minus old divided by old, whoa, okay, that doesn't seem correct. It's because with the order of operations, it's dividing first and then doing that subtraction. So this formula is all over the place. So instead, what I'm going to do is equals. And since I want the new minus old to take place first, I want the subtraction to happen first. I'm going to put some parentheses and then do new minus old. Close the parentheses. And once that subtraction is done, then divide by the old value. And when I press enter, this time I get a 50% year over year change. And that number makes a lot more sense. And then the last one, I'm just going to use the same formula. I could just take this one, change my cursor and drag it down, but I'll just do it one more time manually. I know I got to do the subtraction first and then divide. So parentheses, new minus old, close the parentheses and then divide by old. And this time, whoa, negative 50. Okay, actually, this makes sense, because you can see over here in stock A, the price increased. It went up in 2016 compared to 2015. So my change is a 50% increase. However, this time, the stock price was 100 in 2015, but it went down in 2016. So I need to be able to show my boss or whoever this is for, that the change was actually backwards. It was negative, or my change went down. So I show that by still doing new minus old divided by old. But when you do that, you end up with a negative number this time. And that makes perfect sense because the price went down. So my year over year change was actually negative. It went down by 50%. All right, so I'm actually gonna stop this video here. I'll keep it short. I'm going to go on to the sum function and do the rest of these in future videos. I might just make a whole series of this. And then maybe if it goes over well, I'll even start doing some of these more advanced formulas and all these other exercises as well.
But yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.